Hello my friend, in this video I'm going to show you how you can start posting to social media as like a musician or an artist, a producer, anything like that when you absolutely hate posting to social media. So right off the bat there's three techniques that I'm going to jump into and I'll mention them right off the bat so that you can get an idea of what they are and if you want to click off after that you can. The first one is experimenting with posts so you know what to post. The next is using a process called batching which is essentially just if you need to do one type of video, do like five or six of them at one time since you have everything all set up and ready to go. And then the third thing is scheduling. So the idea is once you have those five or six videos, you can actually schedule them out to go. And then that way you don't have to worry each day about what you need to post. You have all the content done, you can schedule it out and you don't even have to worry about posting it each and every day. It just automatically gets scheduled out and then you can worry about engaging with comments and anything like that. So those are the three main techniques, experimenting, batching and scheduling. If that's all you came here to find out, then good luck on your next release. I'll see you in the next video. But if you wanna get a little bit more into these three processes, that's what I'll spend the rest of the video doing. So before jumping into them a little bit too much, I made this video because I am personally a musician who posts, who posts, who posts to social media quite a bit, but if you saw my, particularly I post on Instagram, if you wanted to check it up, just look it up, Best Friends Club. But I post quite a bit, I post about every single day. Uh, I have kind of a growing following on there and there's I think a decent amount of engagement and a little bit of community growing, which is cool. If you saw just that and you didn't see this video, you'd probably think I love posting to social media and it's the best part of my day or something, but I'm actually one of those musicians. And I think there might be a lot of us out here that actually kind of hate posting to social media, probably don't use social media that much like on our own personal accounts and posting to social media feels like more of like a necessary evil of something that you're supposed to do that kind of feels like a drag and there's so many other things that you could be doing. Um, and I think there's a lot of us out there and so I've kind of figured out some ways to kind of get the benefits of posting to social media without it like taking over your life and having to worry about it too much. And I wanted to share that because again, I think there's a lot of us out there and I think a lot of us will get some uh, good goodness out of this. So uh, there are some obvious benefits to posting social media and I think there might be, the, my opinion is that it's probably a little bit different than what a lot of people think. But for me, the main things that I like about posting to social media is that it's a good platform to kind of test new ideas, whether it be like musical ideas that you're thinking about releasing or things about like what your people might be into. You can kind of see how people react and get feedback from things that you're doing, whether it's musical or testing out, I don't know, image stuff or particular artwork styles that you want to get out there. It's a good way to test and get feedback pretty quickly, which I think is good. Another thing is I find it's also a good barometer to kind of test momentum as well. So if you're posting regularly, particularly if, say, if you're releasing a new song every single month, that's something that I do. Um, you can kind of see like you get to have a vibe for your fan base kind of growing more and more people interacting with you over time. And that's a pretty good feeling. It lets you know you're on the right track. And obviously it's, it feels nice, of course. Uh, and then the third thing is that it lets you kind of share in your successes in a big way. So particularly as you keep moving forward and you maybe start getting placements on high, high quality play, playlists or something just good happens in your career, I think it's a great way to Obviously there's a fine line between bragging and sharing in a success, but it's a good way to post something great that's happened. Maybe you hit a specific streaming milestone and you can share the stuff with your followers and they can kind of share in your successes and celebrate with you. And I think that's one of the most amazing things about it. But on the dark side of it, I would say there's so many negatives to it. So you probably know, particularly on something like Instagram, your organic reach is constantly being throttled and slowed down because they want you to pay for ads. And that's something that I do do, but not for social posts really. Um, so that's pretty frustrating. And then there are things like reels getting interested, it introduced, but then those will eventually get throttled as well because they're gonna wanna start monetizing off of that, making money off of that particular product inside of Instagram. And so that's kind of really frustrating. And I think another big thing that's frustrating is you can put so much time and effort into an Instagram post, but the life of an Instagram post is maybe 48 hours at most. Generally you'll post something, and unless it goes like uber viral, you put all that effort into a 30, 60 second clip, whatever it is, and you get a couple likes on the first day, and then maybe a couple on the second day, and it's gone, and all that effort is behind you. It's not something like YouTube, or if you were writing on a blog, where you could start ranking in the search engine, and they have, or if they have a more 
robust recommendation engine, like for, for YouTube, it'll start recommending your videos to other people. And with those platforms, you post once and you can definitely see an increase of views over time. And it's an asset that'll stay with you forever as long as it's relevant and continues to do well. Where Instagram, you put all this effort into a post and it's gone. And that's extremely frustrating, I think. Um, those are my thoughts on it and also like it could be so draining especially if you're trying to think of what to post every day and you're revolving your world around instagram or whatever it is and that's not what you want to be doing i think as a musician you want to be focusing on the music and the bigger picture stuff like releases and the social media stuff should work for you instead of you having to work for it and then i guess real quick on the other one that's popular tiktok not for me it's probably not for a lot of people either personally i'm not trying to be the next Charlie D'Amelo dancer thing and I feel like that makes me feel like a clown and that's not something that I want to go down. I'm not interested in skits. I'm not interested in any of that kind of stuff. So I don't want to do something just for views and follows and I feel like TikTok is a lot of that. Again, if it's working for you, that's totally cool. But also a big thing is for me, which is scheduling posts so that it's not a big part of my life. Uh, having to get content out on a social media platform. I don't think TikTok has a scheduling feature, so that's something that I avoid personally. So those, those are kind of my thoughts on <laughs> social media, and maybe that kind of lines up with how you're feeling about a lot of this stuff. So now I wanna kind of dive into what you can actually do to post more on social media and kind of make it make it a bit of a more rewarding process for you um, without it being draining and something that you have to worry about a lot about each and every single day. So again, there was three things that I mentioned at the top of the video and I'm gonna dive into those more particularly right now. Uh, right off the bat, there was one called experimenting, batching and scheduling. So in the process of doing this, I would say the first thing that you kinda of wanna do is experiment. So there's a whole bunch of things that you could post on Instagram. You can post pictures of you chilling or like high quality, like promo shots, right? That there's the photo side of things. You could even try doing like pictures of when you go on bike rides or walks or something, whatever. There's all sorts of photos that you could do. In terms of videos, there's no end of, a, of things you could do there. You could do animations with your music behind it. You could do kind of live performance style videos. You could do just videos of you on guitar. I've seen really cool ones where it's like a performance style video and the camera will be fixed so they can record themselves in that same frame and it looks like there's three of them jamming. There's so many cool things you can do, right? Um, but I think what you need to do first is kind of experiment with a bunch of these different ideas. Maybe take some of those ideas that I just mentioned. A good thing to do is go and look at other Instagrammers and see like, oh, like that would be cool. I'd like to try that, I'd like to try this, whatever it is. Then I would say, I would recommend making three or four of those videos, maybe don't post them all at once. You, the idea would be to kind of experiment with them. So you could try posting a video, seeing what their reaction is. Try it a couple times in case maybe the time that you posted it was off or just like the first one didn't land. You want to give it a bit of a fair shake and get an idea of posting different styles of content out there on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is and see kind of what sticks. But there's kind of another aspect to it because I think when you're experimenting here, you're gonna to wanna to find something that strikes a balance between what your audience likes and enjoys, like gets you the views and the clicks and whatever and the comments and all that stuff. But you also do need to balance like your own like mental health kind of aspect of it and making sure that it's something that you're actually proud of. So if you were posting some kind of video where, I don't know, you were skydiving or something and it was really hard for you to do a skydiving video in, even in batches once a month, once a week, whatever, that would suck, right? Or if it's like performance videos and it takes a lot out of you and it's so much work to get one performance video and having to do that every single week, if that's training for you, then that's not something that you could realistic, realistically keep doing. So maybe it'll be something that your audience really likes, but it's really draining for you. Or similar to like the TikTok stuff, if you doing a silly dance or whatever, is something that gets a lot of views, but it's something you're not proud of, then I don't think it's worth pursuing that, even if it gets you all the views. So I think it's a, a balancing act of doing this experimentation process, finding what your audience likes, what you like, and what you can like feasibly actually do and keep doing for years and years and years. Because a lot of this stuff, making it in music, from my experience, because I'm just starting to pop off now, um, it feels weird to say that, but, and video up top about how I got on like seven editorial playlists so that there is some proof behind that. but it is more of a marathon than a race or a sprint or whatever, right? So you need to think about stuff that you could be doing years from now 
months from now, not just what you could post on Instagram today or tomorrow. So that's step one, experiment, find the stuff that works for you. And then that way you can double down on it, which is exactly what step two is. And it's a concept called batching. So basically, I think I heard this potentially from Gary V, who is like a motivational dude you probably have heard of. But the idea is instead of like each day posting one video and like making that one video and posting it that exact day, the idea is like, say if you were gonna do a performance style video, the idea would be pick a day earlier in the week or once a month, whatever it is, and record five or six performances. The one big part of this is there's something called a switching cost. So when you, set everything up and then you play a song and then you you're in the mode of kind of performing and you have everything set up then if you move over to scheduling the post or editing the post then you're switching and you have to get set up and get in the mode for editing then you need to get in the mode for posting and each time you do that you're kind of losing a bit of energy and flow so the idea is if you can film five or six while you're all set up and you're in that that mindset, it'll go by a bit faster and you, then you'll have five or six pieces of content that you could then cut up and then schedule later. So I think that's a lot better of a process for a lot of people and if this is the first time you're hearing it, it's probably gonna be like hopefully a, a light bulb moment because this way you can dedicate your time to one thing and you have a whole batch of content. Moving beyond this, there is a concept called I don't think it has a, a, <laughs> a name actually, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out later. But if you can do something where you could have a bigger, more long form piece of content, maybe something that's five, even 10, 15 minutes, you could film, create that piece of 10, 15 minute content. And then from there, you could then potentially cut up 10, 11, 12 clips from that one bigger piece of content. It's kind of more of a bang for your buck kind of approach. And to give you an example of this, one thing that I'll do is I have something that I'll post called the hybrid set, which is essentially a dollar's piece of gear that I combine with a DJ uh, kind of piece of gear. So I'll mix live improvised stuff with the dollar's gear and then also DJ familiar songs with the DJ controller. And I'll film myself doing like a 30, 40, 50 minute set of that. And then from that one act of doing that larger set, I can then cut up like 10, 15, 20 pieces, 20 clips or so from that larger set. So I'm not filming 10, 20 little things, just by doing one larger thing, I now am able to cut that up. Same thing could be a, if you have like a podcast, if you're doing an hour long podcast, you can probably extract a whole bunch of clips from that. So I think that's a big thing, whether it's you're filming one larger piece of content and cutting it up or just dedicating the time to do five or six pieces of content while you're there batch the content uh, i think that'll honestly save you a lot of time and effort but it's important to experiment first so that you know what content to batch because if you batch five or six pieces of content that no one likes that kind of sucks because then you're, you're posting stuff that people don't like and there's no wiggle room right so i think at first you're going to want to be a little bit slower post one thing at a time see how people react and then kind of move from there so last thing, we're almost about to hit it to the home run here. So first you experiment, figure out what people like, then you batch that content so that you have a whole ton of it. Then the best, most awesome thing is scheduling. So with most social media platforms, at least as they evolve, they'll have some kind of either third party software that you could attach that'll allow for scheduling or with Facebook and Instagram, they actually have something called the Facebook Creator Studio. Um, that you can look up, it's totally free to use and it allows you to schedule the posts. And this is the best because when you have that, that batch of content, then you can just look at all of the stuff that you have and you can schedule it to just go at the, exactly the right time that you want. So one thing is if you've ever tried to post things on your own and you probably heard like, oh, post at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or whatever it is, it could be kind of frustrating having to like, Put it on your phone and then wait for that time and then post it at that time and get all of like the hashtags and write the caption right before you're supposed to post that that sucks and i wouldn't recommend that at all when you schedule you could take the time to find all the hashtags whatever paste them in there figure out a caption and then say post at 9 a.m and that post will just naturally go at that time and then it's just so much more relaxing you can plan everything out and see visually like I'm gonna post this, and then because that was a really intense clip, I'm gonna post something more relaxed the next day or whatever you wanna do. Um, and you could do it a month ahead of time, months ahead of time, whatever you want. 
personally, my way that I do it is I'll have all that content batched out and I'll try to get like three or four months ahead of content so that I'm just kind of safe and I will post new things on a weekly basis. And the reason that I like to do that is usually at the end of the, the week or whatever, if it's Friday, I'll post, I'll schedule everything for the next week, like Monday to Friday, five, five new posts. And this way I can be a little bit adaptive and kind of see how people are reacting to the previous week. If there was any kind of world event that happened and something might not be appropriate to post this way, I can kind of stay on top of things and be a bit, uh, flexible with what I'm posting week to week um, but it's still not a huge time suck because all the stuff's there and it takes me like 15-20 minutes to schedule those posts so it's not a huge deal and that's kind of how I'll do it and particularly if there's like a new release I could schedule stuff around that release and I think that's basically everything I want to talk about scheduling it's super useful um, and one reason that I did want to talk about this particular topic today is because I am releasing a brand new song and usually when I'm releasing a brand new song I'll kind of batch all the content for that song too. Generally what I'll do is I'll have this animation of the artwork in a circle and then it'll spin and then I'll be able to put different sections of the song over that spinning animation and then I'll want to schedule that out. So I'm kind of in the process of doing that this week and when this video drops on Friday, yeah, the song will be actually be out today. So when you're watching it right now, the song's out today. So if you did want to check it out, it's called Evil Containment Wave Part 1. You can look it up on Spotify. I'm not going to put any links in the description or anything like that. But look up on Spotify, it'll be there. And if actually, if you want to check out what I'm posting on Instagram, you can kind of see how I'm posting things to push people over to my releases. Uh, there's a little bit more of a thought into it. And I think when you do things this way and you figure out what the content that works is and how you can schedule and batch it all out, you can be a lot more methodical and do things with a lot more purpose, schedule things out around an event like a release and this and that. And uh, hopefully if you go check out what I'm doing, you don't have to follow me or anything like that, no pressure, but you can get an idea of how I'm, what I'm doing and how that might be working for me. And it kind of is, but, <laughs> um, it could give some inspiration and a little bit of validity to what I'm talking about in this video. Anyways, oh boy, I think I rambled right there. So I'm gonna cut it off there. Um, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, otherwise, good luck on your next release and I will see you in the next video, my friend. Have a good one.